I want to welcome you all here today. My name is Laura Alamillo, and I'm the Associate Dean for the Kremen School. And thank you. <laughs> thank you. I, I want to welcome you all here today to honor our colleagues, faculty, and staff who have years of service in the Kremen School. I know we have families. Uh, we, I see some grandchildren. I see probably some parents here, and we want to welcome you to our school. The faculty and staff that, are, that we are honoring today have years of service in the Kremen School, and they are leaving a legacy of service and hours in various departments in the Kremen School. And so you're going to hear from people who have worked with them closely in the Kremen School. And you're going to hear various stories about their time here. And we all have our own stories, so hopefully we'll have some time to share with each other about the, how, in, in what capacity you have worked with um, these faculty and staff. So I'm going to call up. We're going to honor uh, many people, actually. This is a, a big year for us. And we're going to hear first from Dr. Loma Lee, who will talk about Dr. Pham, Dr. Kian Pham, and we will also honor Lisa Nyberg, who will be honored and spoken of by Colleen Torgerson, who will also talk about Jane Wasulian, who is also retiring. Uh, Dr. Song Lee will talk, to, talk about Dan Smith. Song Lee will also <laughs> share her stories about Steve Kabatian. We will also honor our Dean, Dean Barry, who Jim Marshall will spend some time sharing some stories about our Dean. And then we also want to honor two who, one, um, Dr. Magdaleno, who is unable to be with us today, but we do want to uh, recognize that he is also uh, one of our retirees and we want to we want to um, still honor him for his time here and also Susan Trace who we did honor last year and I had to ask her do you want me to mention you that you will <laughs> you are retiring this year and she said yes this is it <laughs> so we do also want to recognize Dr. Trace for her service in the Kremen School so let's get started Dr. Loma Lee is our first speaker I was hoping I could be like third so I could hear what everybody else said, but uh, here I am. So um, it is my pleasure to uh, introduce Dr. Kian Pham, uh, one of my favorite people. Uh, the only way Dr. Pham would not be one of your favorite people is if you didn't get a chance to work with him because he's really an amazing uh, person. Um, we actually started at the same time here in this, well, when, when the School of Education was over in the other buildings. Uh, I started with the Minicore program in 1990, and that same year, Kian and Jim Marshall, Carol Bolin, Roy Bolin, quite a few faculty that started that same year. Uh, during that time, I got my doctorate, and then eventually became a professor and a colleague of Dr. Fahm. And maybe it's just the nature of being the kind of work that we do, but I didn't really get to know Kian. All I had to go on, with, with him is in the hallway, right? You run into people and if he's really nice and he'd say hello, it was like, oh, that's a nice guy right there. You know, and uh, I, I guess it's just the nature of, of, of what we do, you know, but I had the pleasure of uh, finally getting to work with Dr. Fahm directly through a program called Co-Teaching um, in 2011. And uh, after that, our relationship changed and it was just a, an incredible experience to work with Dr. Fahm. Uh, if you don't know him, he has a, a pretty amazing sense of humor. Uh, you have to really pay attention, but once you do, you, he will keep you laughing. Um, we, uh, we worked with uh, something like 1,500 uh, participants that went through workshops in the seven years that we did the co-teaching training to get together. And <clears throat> one of the things that that I noticed, he, he kept me laughing during the workshops, and I think that's what made it, it kept us all fresh because, 
like I tell my students, if you're bored, can you imagine how your students are? You know, and, and Kian, you know, always made it a lot of fun. Uh, one thing I learned about Kian is he will not go to a meeting unless lunch is served, so I knew he was gonna be here today. <laughs> so, um, that's the first thing he asked. I'd say, Kian, are you going to that meeting? Are, are they serving lunch? He went to all of Jack Benninga's meetings because Jack would always have lunch for us, you know, and that was great. Um, you know, I, I, I never realized how bold Kian was when we first went through the co-teaching uh, training together and we started to plan. Um, he wanted to do one of those, that Abbott and Costello bit, who's on first? You know, and I was terrified, but he came in with a script. So I realized, I mean, he was a risk taker. And uh, he did a little take on it, uh, uh, but his was a bilingual in Spanish. Quien está en primera? Quien, get it? <laughs> so, I mean, I was just like impressed. We never did it, but we had a lot of fun doing the workshops. I think in the seven years that we did co-teaching, we worked with about 33 districts and we made some great connections with, uh, with, with people in the, in, the, in the valley. It really helped us to get to know the educators in the valley in, in a great way. And, it, and uh, it's just a shame that sometimes we don't get a chance to uh, get to know one another in a deeper way, you know, and I, I felt very fortunate that I was able to become a part of that uh, with you, Ken. You know, we went on a couple of uh, conferences and, you know, we presented and, uh, and I think we got to know one another in a, in a, in a deeper way. And I, I just feel very blessed by that, you know. Uh, Ken, before he was a professor, was a chemist in a natural gas company uh, he was also a Google Socrates Fellow Math and Technology faculty. He's a very accomplished guy, but he's also a very humble guy, so you won't always know that about him. And um, so I actually felt very honored that uh, they asked me to introduce you, you know, and, and with all my heart, I'm, I'm, I'm introducing you, uh, Dr. Fahm. Uh, I congratulate you on your decision. I know it's not an easy one, and um, you will now have the opportunity. One of the things I found out about Ken is he loves chicken enchiladas. So in order to keep him happy for co-teaching, I made sure that we had chicken enchiladas at every workshop, and now you can indulge both your passions, chicken enchiladas and playing internet chess. Instead of only 12 hours a day, now it's 18 hours a day, Dr. Fahm. So it gives me um, great uh, pleasure to introduce to you Dr. Kian Fahm. Take too long? <laughs> you want me to stick around here? Or you yeah, well, you can. And we want to present to Dr. Fahm a brick which will say Math Educator. Thank you, Jose. Um, we have done about 900 workshops together. So uh, do we discuss the uh, co-teaching strategies now? Yeah? Uh, Jose told me that um, he would not introduce me anymore if I don't tell new jokes today. So, uh, but uh, I, I don't have any jokes today because I was too busy following the uh, Academy Awards. Uh, so uh, I want to uh, say thank you to my parents to the producers, to the directors. Uh, actually, they are the same people. Uh, I also want to uh, thank my wife, Hương, uh, for her best supporting role. Okay, and the winner is... My retirement. <laughs> thank you. Um, I knew that the School of Education places a lot of importance on teaching. So after my first year of teaching here, I showed my wife the student evaluations. And she said, that's okay, we can move to Cleveland. <laughs> I knew I was not ready for prime time. Uh, so the next few years, I tried harder and Eventually, I uh, showed my teacher, uh, student's evaluation of me to a colleague uh, in the um, CNI department. 
and I uh, told the colleague, I said, look, colleague, I am, uh, uh, look at my scores here. I got a 6.1 on the evaluations. And the colleague told me, you are holding the paper upside down. Uh, the thing is this, uh, after a while, I found out that uh, I actually teach the same group of students right after the semester that uh, Jose taught. Uh, from their comments about Jose, I could see that the students were in awe of Jose. They really think Jose is Jesus. Okay? Uh, I know he doesn't do miracles, but uh, I'm sure he can walk on water uh, if the temperature outside is 32 degrees Fahrenheit. Um, um, because of that, so I wanted to impress Jose. So before I uh, give out the um, student evaluations to my students, I passed out the Starbucks cards first. <laughs> then, after I got the evaluations, I gave to Jose and I said, look at this, I get a 4.9 on the student evaluations. And Jose told me, I know, sometimes I get a low score of 4.9 too. <laughs> but the moments that I remember best were the moments that I shared with my students. The students showed me grace. It is the kindness and the forgiveness that I did not deserve, but they gave to me anyway. For instance, when I tried to make a point in geometry, the students gave me their unparalleled attention, even though when my explanation uh, went in circles. <laughs> of course, they also laughed at my jokes. It is a requirement uh, in my classes. The students indeed were the wind beneath my wings. All the moments and experiences that I have shared with the students have made it a short 28 years. I feel like I am the star in the best picture, life. Thank you for the memorable events. Thank you, Dr. Pham. That was beautiful. <laughs> I'd like to call up Dr. Torgerson, and if uh, Lisa Nyberg could come up also. Okay, so I was all prepared, but she can't go, can she? <laughs> My eyes are tearing up. Come up here. Is it too much sun? So it's with a lot of friendship and admiration that I have the opportunity to talk about Lisa Nyberg today. She's a great peer, and she's retiring from the Kremen School in Fresno State, but we know she's not retiring from the great good works of science education. We know she'll be out there still doing a lot of things with students and with teachers. She began this interest in Kansas as the daughter of an engineer, and she was raised on meat and potatoes and Midwest corn. She was a wonderful daughter. She cared for her parents very deeply when they most needed her. And she still reminds me almost every day about how lucky I am that I still have a parent to talk to. Lisa's education was shaped by the University of Kansas and the University of Oregon. Whether teaching elementary students in Kansas, kindergartners at Valley Oak, or teacher residents with Sean, she is the model teacher. Her classrooms must have water. We, we had to actually move her classroom. We had to put in sinks in school districts. It must have water so that she can do the job she needs to do with science. Um, 
she may be wearing a scuba mask, she may be scooping out pumpkin seeds, she may be planting plants, but everybody's engaged, the students and our candidates. Everyone must love science. She came to Fresno State in 1998. She'd interviewed with San Francisco, but the luxury transportation in Fresno and the wasabi at the restaurant kept her here. <laughs> she, um, Jim Marshall and the then preschooler, Emily, who is now, has her master's degree, almost, <laughs> um, took Lisa to her first Japanese restaurant ever, and Lisa hasn't eaten anything green since. In addition to science education, she's been president of the faculty assembly, a key member of three accreditations, the coordinator of the multiple subject program, in on the ground floor of partnerships and team teaching, and of the faculty in resident with our current grant. She teaches with Lisa Tompkins as a team, providing support there in a way we haven't seen before and has gained national attention. As a multiple subject coordinator, she led us through some work. We had a large unsequenced program that was moved to a sequenced 34 unit program. We did that work with chocolate on the table as provided by Lisa. We had joint meals and any of us who were there, and Jose will testify, can remember the thousands of paper slips that we used to build our new program. And much of that program is still evident today, the best parts, and we, then we make everything better. Her publications are written to inform teachers. She writes articles, but she also writes books, How to Talk So Kids Can Learn, and her newest book is The Power of Questioning and Investigating. She's worked nationally on the board of the NSTA, and through that board work, she is moving the, uh, the next generation science standards forward, and I believe that's probably what she'll be doing for the rest of her career. <laughs> Um, Lisa takes on life each day and finds the fun. She's, she's like a kid, and I mean that in the best of senses. <laughs> when um, teacher candidates came into the computer lab around 2005, she was demonstrating this brand new device. It's called FaceTime. It was only in our computer labs, not phones. So she called Laura Rabago on the second floor in the office, expecting to have a quick demonstration. She had all her students crowded around the computer to see how she could talk to another floor in this magic. When who surprised her but Dean Barry, and he regaled them with the man who shot Liberty Valance. <laughs> In China, she buys kites and flies them over Xi'an. In Africa, she dances with abandon. In Chicago, she goes to the Science Museum. And in New York, she goes to the M&M store. <laughs> and whenever we're moving to our next event, she has her favorite phrase, we're off like a herd of turtles. Science is a topic that can be connected to much learning, ELA, math, writing, everything, but it's often not elevated and sometimes doesn't exist in our elementary schools. Any candidate that's had Dr. Nyberg was changed and reformed. They are now affecting their students' view of and understanding of science and the reason. It's transformative. We don't know what we'll do without her. Positiveness, her upliftingness, her caring spirit, She's planted many seeds, she's sprouted many teachers, and she's growing many citizens to use science. So, congratulations. Thank you. you know where it's from, they all, all know. <laughs> oh, thank you, thank you. Awesome, thank you. Oh boy, okay, I wasn't gonna, not gonna cry, not gonna cry. When I first uh, interviewed lots of different places, um, I had an opportunity to meet lots of faculty and staff in different places and was trying to decide after leaving the elementary school where I wanted to make my home. And it was a big transition going from elementary teacher to teaching at the university. And at some of the places where I would interview, it was very um, all about the, the vitas of the professors and it was all about them. But when I came here to interview, you could tell the caring you could tell that it was about the teachers. You could tell it was about the kids that they were serving. And that's what made my decision to come to Fresno State. Because here there was a heart beating. And here there was a place where people really did care about the kids that they were going to serve. They really did care about um, the teachers that they were preparing to make the world a better place. So I came here to plant my seeds 
to plant some ideas and possibilities and it's been amazing through the years. Um, when we, we worked to redesign the program, we went old school and we had all of the teacher performance assessments and all of the uh, TPAs, all of the TPEs, all on pieces of paper and on butcher paper and we, we planned it and designed it and put the pieces together had retreats to try to talk to each other and figure out what was best for the kids, but always keeping the kids in mind who we were going to serve. That it wasn't just about our class, it was about the kids that we were gonna serve. And that, that is my hope for you, that that will continue as you evolve and as new people come on board. Uh, it's so important to get to know each other. Uh, we were so blessed at the beginning of my time when I was the faculty president. I went to the dean at the time and said, you know, it would be so great for us to do this ropes course together. And Jose and his team took us out and we did crazy things like climbed up this, this big ladder and I started going up without the, the safety harness and Jose was like, stop, 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 you know, we need to put the safety harness on. And we did something called Go For It, where you would jump off this platform and grab this thing that was like a trapeze. And all sorts of things like that. But that brought the faculty together because we, before that time, when we'd come to faculty assemblies, you, a lot of times people only were in their own heads. They weren't finding ways to connect with each other. And that incredible gift that Jose and his team provided that opportunity to get to know each other. And I've been so incredibly blessed with our administra in administration here with Dean Barry and Jim and Sarah and Colleen to have the support to do new things, to try new ideas, to do new ventures. And the work that's happening now at places like Washon, um, with the work that Lisa and Kathy did with their grant and gave me the opportunity to go back to the elementary school after 20 years it's been so cool to be able to kind of come full circle because I've had an opportunity to do writing, had an opportunity to work with committees to make the school better, to make our programs better. But I got to end my career at Washon doing a faculty in residence and we were able to provide great opportunities to take theory into practice and show the residents what it's like to work in the school district and really listen to the district and see how can we make that interface, how do we make that bridge between the school district and the university so that we don't become separate, that we really come together. And had the opportunity at the end of my time here, I offered to do science teaching in the classroom and I thought, well, three or four teachers would take me up at Washon and 18 teachers signed up. And so I taught, had an opportunity to teach in 18 different classrooms from transitional kindergarten to sixth grade. And it was so cool. So it was an opportunity to come full circle to the elementary. Uh, so thank you all, all of the incredible faculty here, all of the people that worked together to redesign the program, that we did the retreats together and, and worked together. Thank you for all that you've done. And to all the new faculty coming on board, I hope you'll continue that that work, that hard work of listening to each other and trying to understand different perspectives and work toward those ideals together. So thank you all. I so appreciate all that you do. Jane Masulian, can you please come up? I had the great opportunity to also share um, about Jane. And actually, Jane and I knew each other before we were ever at the university. We have children about the same age. Um, Jane's a Fresnan. She's an alum of Fresno State. And she also had wonderful parents and has a mom still and spends lots of time with them and two beautiful daughters. Mallory, we've had the great pleasure of being around many days. And um, Mary Jane is now a mommy and so Although she's retiring, she's going to the best job in the world 
to be a grandma. Jane came to Fresno State in 1993, 34 years ago. She was working part-time. She'd been a teacher, but she was working part-time because she had her girls and provided support in the, probably the most important aspect of preparing teachers, and that's what we call student teaching um, for many, many years, and now we call it clinical field work. And so if, if anyone's affected more teachers to have the confidence to go to the, up to their job and the next day, it's those people who have the students for field work and final student teaching, and Jane's been doing it for 34 years. So we greatly thank her for that. She w has been involved with the CNI department. She's been on committees, and she's worked very hard on the Character and Ed Conference, which is close to 30 years and providing um, both Fresno Pacific and Fresno State students, but Jane wasn't just there that day. Jane was building that conference over the years, calling people and being the, one of the main faces behind the, the success of that conference, and we greatly thank her. Today, she works as the liaison and teacher in residence, part of the grant, for Sanger. We call her our Sanger person. She is the face of Fresno State and Sanger Unified. She has done a fabulous job there, and she had to transition from sort of a different job of liaison into faculty and resident and help us see the changes and step up and do this new kind of role that was there. So we also um, are so appreciative of that. But then when teachers leave us, they go to what's called BITSA or induction, which means the state supports them for two more years. And Jane also helped with that for many years. So we have a person who touched lives across 34 years going out into our schools and teaching, but then also stayed with them through that induction phase and all that support. She's been a great friend to many. She's been on the first floor for years. She's been on the second floor for a few years. She also said, I can't talk very long because she has to get to Sanger because she has another work meeting to do today. But we want to give her a big thank you for all her work with our students. I'm sure I Well, hello. I am unprepared because I was just going to come down here quickly. I am heading out to Sanger for our new group that's starting, uh, well, today will be their very first day with us, so doing interview day. But, you know, I just look around at everyone. Um, first, I was looking at the environment. I know Dr. Monkey. I thought I saw him, but I... Um, I remember when the building was first built and we'd walk across this hot cement walk and it was like a tru we'd have to trudge across in the middle of summer to get to the door and now you've got these beautiful trees so thank you it's a lovely place to have an event um, it's very pretty thank you Dr. Monkey but I look around at all my colleagues and I think about when I reflect on my years I've probably been here longer than anybody here um, I think about all the friendships and all the collaboration, all the working together that we did to support our students, to support our community, our school districts. And it, it's just been so exciting to watch. Now I see so many um, teachers out in the community who we've um, supported. And Jane, you were my, my coach. And I remember talking about different professors here at the university, different programs. So um, I thank Fresno State for giving me the opportunity to um, affect the environment, affect schools, um, create the next generation of teachers. It's, it's been an honorable position, and I'm grateful for the opportunity. Um, I wish you all uh, much success, um, and um, continue on with our journey of getting bigger, better, and stronger as a, as a program. So thank you all. Thank you. As we're hearing from Dr. Lee, if she could come up, we're going to be passing out some cake to celebrate our, our faculty and staff today. And Dr. Lee if, can come up with Dr. Smith. Dr. Dan Smith, what can I say about him? 
He embarked on a journey with Fresno State a year after he graduated with his EDD in psychology, counseling, and guidance from the University of Northern Colorado, and he never left since. He is the current title holder of Grand Marshal at Fresno State, being one of the university's longest tenured faculty members with 40 years of service. I'm, sh yes. I'm not sure if many of us can beat his record. I still have 28 more years to catch up. Um, and, but, but you know, um, to catch up to his record of service, but perhaps a lifetime or two lifetime to catch up to his achievements, and I'm expecting to do more in my next lifetime. Uh, Dr. Smith has made multiple contributions to Fresno State and the counseling field. A few examples, just a few, a few examples of his achievements are, in the early 80s, he developed what we um, call today as the dual channel audio feedback. So this is something that we use in the counseling lab to provide feedback to our students. And guess what? He won the Claude Laval Award for innovation for that innovation. And if any of you have had the privilege of sitting on, at the university research committee evaluating these Laval applications, you know it is very competitive. I was on that committee and it is very competitive. Um, in 1984, he was instrumental in changing the name of the counseling program to Counselor Education, which is a name we still use today to include three of our counseling programs. He started Clovis, Fres Clovis Family Counseling Center in 1985 to what is now known as Fresno Family Counseling Center, offering services every semester to our community. And I just wanted to send a nod to Dr. Steve Price for introducing Dr. Smith to the late Doc Buchanan for providing a space for the start of Clovis Fresno Counseling Center. Dr. Smith also founded the local chapter of Camp, known as the San Joaquin Valley Chapter, which is still viable today. He also promoted the California MFCC licensure to university students via satellite TV, which was a big thing back then. He was also, um, Besides being chair for 15 years, he was also a coordinator for two programs, PPS program and the special education program. He also served as president twice for the 30,000 member California Association of Marriage and Family Therapists. In my view, Dan is a man with few words. Uh, he's made ma magnificent contributions. He's a great professor and mentor. And according to Chris Lucy, he enjoys Dan's wishes, Dan's ever growth best wishes for Christmas. And ladies and gentlemen, it is my pleasure to introduce Dr. Dan Smith. I will be brief. I want to thank my family for coming today, my wife Judy and my daughter Erin. And as you can see in my retirement, I'm going to get to play with two babies. They're both here today, my grandbabies. So um, I have some fun things to do. Um, you know, I marvel all the time that I've lasted 40 years here. I only came for one year. I had a one-year contract. Oh, Sarah Lamb, hi. I had a one-year contract, and uh, I don't know how this turned into 40 years, but uh, somehow it did. I knew I was ready to retire. Two things told me that it's time to retire. One of them is that um, I'm getting so many retirement announcements from my students, people who I brought into the profession who are retiring before me. That's a very strange feeling. Um, it's time to go. The most important, of course, being that I am um, one of the few faculty members on this faculty who have a chili pepper on rate my professors. So um, once you have that, it's, you have everything. It's okay to go. Being a counselor educator has been a great experience for me. We haven't really quite fit into the School of Education exactly. We're kind of an odd, odd fit. Uh, but thankfully, we've been really successful. We put a lot of therapists out in the community, which uh, is a reason why it's so hard for me to find someone to talk to. I know everybody, uh, which is a difficult problem. But we put a lot of people out there and are doing great work. So uh, I'm very proud of that. And I'm sure the counseling faculty will continue to produce good counselors. So thank you very much. I appreciate this uh, nice little 
celebration and everyone carry on because I'm not going to take care. Dr. Lee will also introduce Dr. Kubatian, so if you can please come up. Dr. Kubatian started at Fresno State as a student. He also met his lifetime partner as a student. He earned both his bachelor and master's degree from Fresno State before obtaining his PhD in vocational rehabilitation and human services from Walden University in Minnesota. He has 22 years of service at Fresno State as an adjunct and tenure track professor. Dr. Kubatian also has a blooming consultation business in vocational rehabilitation during his years at Fresno State and I'm assuming after retirement as well. He is also a practicing clinician and nationally certified as a certified rehabilitation counselor, certified disability management specialist, and national board certified counselor. Dr. Kubachan shares that his humble accomplishment at Fresno State during the last 22 years is the joy he has experienced in serving our university, community, and most importantly, training emerging student professionals with hands-on skills in rehabilitation counseling to empower people with disability. However, he states that his greatest ac accomplishment at Fresno State is meeting his college sweetheart, Karen, in the Commons dorm dormitory while he was pursuing his undergraduate degree at Fresno State. Karen and Steve has been married happily for 38 years, and the reason for his retirement is to spend more time with his grandson, Bowie. Dr. Kubachian will be missed for his mouth and dedication to our students. One of his colleagues, Dr. Beckton, said, Steve is great, but his wife is an icing on the cake. Therefore, I want to extend my welcome to Dr. Kubachin's wife, Karen, and I want to introduce to you our wonderful friend, Dr. Steve Kubachian. I'm in the field of rehabilitation counseling and rehabilitation is about taking all of the components in a person's life to create positive change. And this university has done that for me and I'm truly grateful. It's a home run because I have received my bachelor's degree, my master's degree, and I met my beautiful wife here on campus. And this has given me so much. And so being able to come back and teach and work with students has been truly an amazing and wonderful experience. And I want to thank you all for that. Um, I just want to say thank you for your blessings and one thing too I really appreciate is the leadership I've been blessed with here with the administration, the dean, the associate dean, the chair, the coordinators that I've worked under have been just phenomenal and it's always been the, the focus is the student has always been the end result as far as what's best for the student and that philosophy has just carried over to everything that I've done here on this campus so I just want to say thank you for that as well. I wish you all well. I, I am always a bulldog and I'll always support the university and so I'm here to come back if I need to help you guys in any way possible. And so thank you so much for everything this wonderful day. Thank you. Okay, so we are now at Dr. Berry. So may I please have uh, Dr. Marshall and Dr. Lamb. I think you're both, maybe all three of you come up. Yeah. You know, John Dewey once wrote, education is not preparation for life. Education is life itself. When I hear that, I think of Paul Berry, a life dedicated to education and to educational leadership. Many have argued that to be an effective educational leader, you must be risk adverse, fiscally conservative, slow to react. Paul is none of those things. <laughs> and it's a good thing because that's not what we needed this past 15 years he's been our leader. Whether you're in teacher education, school leadership, counseling, we needed a leader that would take risks, would invest liberally, would respond immediately when the success of our students, our faculty, or our programs were challenged. 
And Paul was that leader. So thank you, Paul, for that. I've learned a lot over the years from Paul Barry, but not in the office, not in the conference room, not even at a convention center, not even when we were traveling in Africa or China or Washington, D.C., places we've all been. Most of what I learned from Paul Barry was around the campfire. We spent many evenings discussing issues, debating what's right for kids, envisioning the future. Of course, I did have to endure some few bad poems and songs. Okay, maybe more than a few, but nevertheless. So in honor of those times, and in honor of four decades of service to education, the Division of Research and Graduate Studies presents to you So here's to Paul Barry. Sarah, come up. My dear colleagues, I do not have any script written, so what I'm saying is wh what comes to my heart at this moment. Um, slightly before 2010, um, Dr. Barry approached me to uh, be thinking about becoming his uh, special assistant. And at that time, I, I was very naive, and I tried to have been trying for many years stay away from second floor because I do not believe that I would uh, be having a role in administration, uh, but Dr. Barry have given me a chance that uh, has um, helped me to become who I am today. I'm very grateful. So when I became uh, his uh, special assistant, I tried to ask some people, um, how can I be supporting of my dean? And I asked um, Don Wise, and don't tell me that, Sarah, you have to sit down with Dr. Barry and ask him, um, what kind of legacy do you want me to help you to develop? And because Dr. Barry has been so busy doing what he wants to do, it's very difficult for me to write down a very neat way of looking at what kind of a legacy he wants to um, leave behind. So what I'm trying to do today is to tell you what kind of legacy he has left behind in my heart. Um, diversity. I have been with Dr. Barry for many, many meetings with, uh, uh, with faculty, with staff, being with him in uh, traveling to Ghana, China, Ecuador, and looking at how he interacts with people from different culture, different scenario. I find him so affectionate, so loving and respectful of many people. And oft, many times when we talk about diversity, um, he, I know he has the heart to respect and affect um, many people and support everyone. And I love to remember what he said to me that, hey, Sarah, when I look at you, I'm not seeing a Chinese, I'm not seeing a woman, I'm seeing Sarah in totality. And for this, I really am very grateful. Another thing is um, the bonus that Dr. Barry left behind in my heart as a bold leader. He would say yes to many, many different projects that faculty brought forward to him. And he has very quick and quick sense of the vision, um, understanding what the faculty want to accomplish, and also believing in the faculty, in what they have in mind. And he support many, many of innovative projects and without even questioning a lot of details because he looked into the big picture. And one of the um, common saying that he has to me is like, I just want them to be happy. <laughs> and that is what our dean have been trying to do with our, our, our faculty and staff. And other things that I'm very privileged to observe is his boldness and his um, his courage to look, use data, to use reasoning, use theory and evidence to help the whole CSU campus um, across the 23 campuses to look into what is the best practice for teacher education. He does not shy away from very tough arguments, controversy, because he believes in what he is doing and he wants to do the best for teacher education. One of the things that he left 
behind in my heart, mind. What he loved to say is, I don't want to regret so much what I have done, but what I have not done. And I wish you the best and hope that you will have a lot of things that you want to do that you won't regret not having done. Thank you. Thank you. My uh, associate deans have meant everything to me, but then again, so have the faculty. Uh, I added up the numbers. We've hired 75 tenure track faculty since I came here. 54 of them will be on the faculty next fall still. So that's pretty good out of about 65, 68 faculty we have in total. And what we've accomplished over the last 15 years is really due in part to their vision and with my associate deans, our ability to support them, to prepare teachers on site, out in schools, to move Fresno family counseling to a reasonably safe location from some of its previous places. For faculty to pursue research, uh, Susan Trace and I, along with Jim and Colleen and Robin Caro is in here, have published about 15 articles in the last 10, 12 years, much of it countering traditional teacher ed thought from the federal government, from our national accreditors, so much that uh, CAPE is now, the, our teacher ed accreditors are changing their standards because they can't really fight the data that we've, uh, we've produced because it led, for one thing, to every school in California dropping out because of their false uh, premises. Fresno State's a, mir a miracle. It's a miraculous university. Our students are the poorest in the nation. You could quibble and say there may be some other place, but there really isn't. Lowest income, lowest predictions for success, whether they're here at Fresno State or over there at University High, but the faculty at both places overcome that prediction. We, number one in the nation above any other university at the success that this faculty creates for our students. And number two in the nation for the changes that this faculty make on the community. And that's really saying something. That's, uh, it is miraculous. And it only happens because everybody pulls together with the same vision, which is, you know, change the, change the community for the better, change the prediction for everybody that lives here for the better. So thank you for letting me be your leader for 15 years. I'm it's the best thing I've ever done other than Mary Colleen. And uh, I'm be ever grateful for having the opportunity to do that. Thank you. So we're going to toast, if you pour your glasses, all our retirees, here's to Susan, to Jane, to Steve, to Ken, Dan, and Ken, and Lisa, thank you for all you've, all you've done, and drink away because it's not alcohol. <laughs> Do we want to thank everyone for your time?